from the former convent of the Good Shepherd overlooking Inwood Hill Park in New York City. Welcome to Inwood Artworks On Air. It's where you meet the musicians, filmmakers, writers, theater makers, and artists of all stripes that make their home what we affectionately call Upstate Manhattan. I'm your host, Aaron Sims, and today we welcome playwright James Bosley. James is the founding and former artist director of Up Theater Company. His plays, All the Best Ingredients, Broad Channel, and Epic Poetry were all given the world premieres at Up Theater Company. He also directed Up's production of Merciful Father by Atar Hadari. He produces the annual Dead of Winter new play reading series as well. His play, Fun, first developed at the Eugene Playwrights Conference and was given its first production at the MCC Theater, followed by many subsequent productions in the U.S. and abroad, has been produced continually. The film version of Fun, for which he wrote the screenplay, was shown in competition at Sundance, amongst other festivals, and opened commercially at the Film Forum in New York City. His screenplay for it was nominated for an IFP Spirit Award. James's plays have also been produced by MCC Theatre, the Williamstown Theatre Fringe Festival, the Ice Factory, and many others. He has been awarded residency fellowships from Yadu, the McDowell Colony, and the Edward Albee Foundation. In addition, James was a member of the 2018 Lincoln Center Theatre Directors Lab. We're going to talk to him about his work and so much more, but first, let me welcome you, James, to Inwood Artworks On Air. How's it going? It's going great. Thank you for having me. I'm you, honored to be here. You betcha, man. It's good to have you here. So I'm always fascinated how people even want or attempt to get into the craft, we call it here. Uh And uh, is it true that you were a U.S. merchant mariner and was offered a role in a movie without any prior (laughs) acting experience whatsoever? How did you hear about that? My God, yes. Um, I do my homework on you, man. Yeah, wow. I Uh, care. It was a long time ago. Um, Shall I tell the tale? Please. I was a merchant marine, and I was between ships. And a friend of mine was a photographer. He lived a couple of blocks away. And he shot for magazines, like, you know, second-level magazines, like High Times was his big client. And uh, he did, there another uh, publication that they had was um, Writer's Digest. It was like where to send you poetry, how to get an agent, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, he called me up and said, look, the guy who was supposed to be on the cover of the magazine, pretending to be a writer, uh, he's not showing up. Can you come over, just sit in this white box, because the... The edition was, um, is writing the loneliest profession. So he said, just pretend to be a writer. I went, but I am a writer. You know, I, I, I had published a few couple of poems at that point, so I considered myself a writer. So I went over, I did the, the shoot, and, the, you know, it comes out. I'm on the cover of this, of this magazine, which was kind of cool <laughs> yeah. to see it on the newsstand. Um, and I got a letter about a month later. Um, the, the, somebody wrote to the magazine, and the magazine called my friend Peter and said, uh, look, your friend's got a letter. Uh, the guy on the cover, and he said, we don't know him, so they you know, deliver it to him. So, so he did, and I read the letter. I thought, wow, my first fan mail. <laughs> the letter said, look, I saw you on the cover of Writer's Digest, and I want to tell you that I've written these two books, and uh, 20th Century Fox has optioned them, and they're, and they're going to do a, a movie, and it's about a sailor who's lost in China during the Marco Polo days and has these adventures as a lone you know, Westerner in the, in the Orient. And she said, I saw your picture, and in my mind when I was writing the book, I imagined someone who looked exactly like you. And if you, know, if you don't want to come and audition for the, for the movie, I'd love to have you. And I thought, wow, this is it. I'm going to be a star, you know. I said, wait a minute. I better learn how to act first. <laughs> so I ran down to HB Studio and started taking acting classes. And through the acting classes, I said, hmm. I bet I, could, I bet I could do this as well as some of these scenes I was reading. So that's what I, that's what I started. So it was kind of a roundabout. You know, sometimes fate just gives you an elbow and you find yourself in a world that you never imagined you would find yourself in earlier in your life. P.S. The movie never was made. I never heard from the woman again. I don't know if it was a hoax or what, but it's changed my life. Wow. And so you were in class better. as HB, right? <laughs> Excuse me? So you enrolled in class as HB, right? Yes. I went down to HB, studied with uh, William Hickey, the late, great William Hickey. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, awesome. And, uh, and so did that lead you writing for the theater then? Yes, I started writing for the theater, and my second and, play yeah. was picked up by the O'Neill uh, uh, Playwrights Fun. Conference. Yeah. And, uh, and then I, I had an agent after that, and you know, that's what got me convinced that I could actually do this. Mr. Big Time, how about that? <laughs> exactly. So what attracts you to theater? I mean, because you had, like I said, film was like your first, you know, saying, oh my God, film. Uh, but theater is like, you fell in love with theater from HB. Or like, like, what made you fall in love with the art form to write for it? Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, when I first started, I was mostly working in 
dirty black boxes on 42nd Street, you know, that, that went before it got spiffed up. Theater Row before it was technically quoted Theater Row. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And uh, I don't know, there was just something about the, the, the grittiness of it and the dirtiness and, and all these young people, you know, passion um, and very uncommercial. And uh, it, was, it, it kind of was very poetic in a way, you know, and coming at it from a poet's uh, point of view, it kind of just grabbed me and I thought, well, I could, you know, have this way of writing and still be involved with the world at large. It wasn't that just home alone uh, doing my private thing. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I think, and also too, is like, it's a family too. You know, you kind of, you, you find, you, you kind of fall in, you know, you're your people. Are, yeah, right? yeah. 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 That's pretty cool. Well, uh, along with a few uptowners moving your way up from 42nd street, uh, you founded up theater and led it as artist director and presenting new plays for the Northern Manhattan community. Uh, you've been prolific in finding venues in our very venue challenged neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, so I tip my hat to you in that. And, uh, as there are, for those who, um, for those of you who are listening, you probably do realize it because I bring it up fairly often. But uh, there are no traditional performing arts spaces here, unless it's a church or a school or something like that. Uh, so it's a very much labor of love for sure in putting these together. Uh, and so, can you share what went into your decision to create the company? Actually, um, well, um, two things went into it. One was. Uh Speaking to a lot of the parents, you know, when you when you have little kids, the parents tend to become friends as well. And many of them, as many people who live up here are in are, are in the theater, mm-hmm. and uh, complaining about having to go down to rehearse, mm-hmm. go downtown to see something, go down to see your friends. Everything was downtown, downtown, downtown. Yep. Said, well, we all live up here. Why don't we have a theater up here? Yeah. So um, uh, I believe it was Matt Higgins who got the idea of plastering all the old storefronts, the empty storefronts, where there was nothing going on, because like storefront theater, that's what I wanted to do. And why don't we have a theater here? We would splash these painted, hand-painted, sloppily. Why, did, why isn't there a theater here? And we did it in English and Spanish, and we did it all over the neighborhood. And, uh, and people began to like be curious about it. And uh, uh, there's a couple of the local uh, media things, they did p- pieces on us and stuff. And that's what people started hearing about us. And, uh, and that's sort of how we got off the ground. But it also it was, um, uh, you know, you like working with your friends. And we, we felt very simpatico about the kind of theater we wanted to do. So it was an easy thing to start, not an easy thing to run. <laughs> it's always easier to start, right? It's running it and being the administrator as well as one of the artists. That's yeah. the real challenge. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, well, <laughs> at a, at a, at a, not being glib at all with this question, but it's like, because you know I'm in the same boat in many ways. Like knowing then what you know now, <laughs> you know yeah, you yeah, do things differently yeah, at all. Yeah, or, yeah. Yeah. You know it's it's a it's because it's it's a lot. It's a yeah. lot. It's because you don't get to be. Um, you know, it's 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 as our listeners know from our interview with Kirby Fields. Like you've like you've abdicated your leadership role, as artistic director of the company. Um, but you know what was I, was I was curious. Was that part of your reason why for stepping down to write more because. Doing the admin work, it's such a brain drain. Um, people don't realize that. They think, oh, you're that, and you're also the playwright. Oh, and you're yeah, also, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah, he's also loading in the set. He's also organizing, and he's also working behind the scenes, working with marketing, working with press, yeah. working with, you know, building the creative teams and making sure things are going along accordingly. So uh, I'm just curious, like, but people aren't aware that Ministry of Work can really take up your time and headspace. So I was yeah, figuring yeah. Was that one of the reasons why you That's, transitioned. That was the biggest reason, of course. Yeah. Um, the other reason was, you know, uh, Kirby is uh, significantly younger than I am, and I thought we needed a fresher look. You know, uh, I don't, I wouldn't want Up Theater to become, you know, do the same thing every year, even though we do different things every year. But you know, have the same uh, perspective. I wanted to bring in somebody young and fresh with new ideas, and Kirby has certainly done it. He's been doing a fabulous job, much more, much better than I, than I could do. And uh, the other thing is, uh, it's, I have a theory about startup artistic companies, whether it's theater or other. Uh, art forms that you know artists start it with the, with a passion and, and there's a need for it and you, you and then you you grow to a point where oh you know now we need it, we need somebody to help us run this and get grants and you know mm-hmm. do all the administrative things and artists are not always equipped to do that so we reached yeah. that point where uh, we needed to grow out of an art artist run company now Kirby is an artist of course and a playwright but uh, that's always seems to be the point at which 
organizations like ours break down when nobody wants to do the administration because it becomes more and more as you yeah. grow bigger and bigger. Yeah, yeah. Well, I will say this though. Well, if you haven't paid attention to Ups announcing for their new season announcement, you know, you would hardly know you've stepped away. You're very well featured, <laughs> I think. Uh, your presence, I feel, is inseparable from the identity. I mean, you were honored, I have to mention this past year, as their uh, honor and upper benefit, uh, which has been wonderful and well-deserving. Congrats again. Um, and you have two readings during its upcoming season, right? Uh, just one for, of my play. I thought you have two. Yeah, oh, the, oh, the radio play, I thought, and then you oh, had... Oh, the radio play, yes, yeah. of course. Yeah, I, 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 See, I, I pay did attention to Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Forgot you about may not that. know about your work, but I know all yeah. about your work. Yeah, but that was kind of we did that as a radio play last yeah, year, yeah, yeah. and uh, it was very successful. So they tell me, and uh, so this year, I don't know whose idea it was. Let's do it live in front yeah. of our, in front of our, yeah. our friends and audience uptown, and uh, so that should be fun. Yeah, very cool. So tell us about the one that you just wrote, um, a thing the likes you've never seen. Um, yes, you know I wrote that. Um, I finished it just as the. Uh, I don't want to say pandemic was ending because it's obviously still going on. But th- th- when we were still in the throes of it, um, I, 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 it was based on dreams I had. Um, and so the play is a dream. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a series of dreams that somebody has and is relating them to their lover because they're stuck in bed. And, you know, they're, you, there's not much to do. So she regales her lover with uh, these, these dreams. And they're all about love and desire. And um, and uh, I, I wrote it um, from a place I've never uh, wrote before, which was totally um, from the non-judgmental uh, side of my brain. You know, I didn't write notes. I didn't have an outline. I just kind of let my imagination take over without worrying too much about structure or anything. And it just it kind of came out in a in a in a crazy rush. And so it has a, a surreal s- sense to it a little bit. But it's, I think it's, but it's supposed to be a comedy, believe it or not. And uh, it's going to be done at Lincoln Center on October 23rd. We are doing it in, they have the movie theater where they have the uh, New York Film Festival, the same space. And uh, it's got 14 actors in it, and it's going to be quite a, uh, a grand day, I hope. And uh, most of them will be our regulars, you know. Sure. You know, uh, a lot of our up uh, actors that you've seen in our shows before. That's awesome. And what, what do you, what date it is we can tell our listeners? October 23rd. Okay. It's a Sunday, 2 Are p.m. Are tickets available? Not yet. No, okay. no. Um, we're going to be sending out more information on that soon. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, very cool. Um, and, uh, well, do you have any other works in the pipeline we should be aware of? What are, what are you working on now? You know, actually, I, 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 I started writing uh, some fiction lately. I, I, I don't know where that came from. Well, you know, I had a, 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 I went to a memorial, a 4th of July service. I was in Paris. And they, the, the French army and the Americans, they, they had American veterans as well at the Arc de Triomphe. And there were these old World War II veterans there. And I just admired the bearing that they held themselves to, you know, in their 90s. And uh, it just, I was really moved by that. And so I, uh, I developed a character around, you know, an old veteran and uh it's his a day in his life so that's a a, a story that I write. and i've been writing short plays and, you know I'm, i have a couple of ideas for bigger projects um and it's it, i'm not one of these prolific writers that can bang from one thing to another i i sort of have the mull you know and uh well, i love short plays i mean i feel like there's a lack of respect for the short form yeah yeah you know like the est we used to do the est yeah marathon yeah, it yeah. used to be so yeah. great yeah um, and uh, you guys did a uh, short play. Uh, I think your first production was all short plays, wasn't it? That was our fourth production. Your fourth fact, production. It was called Four. Four. Your fourth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fourth you your yeah. It was our fourth production, and it was four short plays. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. I, remember, I remember you did season one acts of some kind. Yeah. yeah. The, um, this play I was just talking about, the dream play, it, because it's individual dreams, they are like, they are like in, uh, a series of short plays. Okay. So in a way, it is kind of a short play evening. Gotcha. So now you're only writing plays and you have all this time to hang out. Uh, how's Inwood been treating you? Like, like, I like to hear like your take on the temperature of the neighborhood now because uh. we're knock on whatever wood, proverbial wood you could find is that, you know, we're trying to get everyone healthy and moving in the right direction to going back and feeling comfortable and seeing live performances, whether it's masked or unmasked or yeah. vaccinated or unvaccinated, whatever it is like encouraging people to come together again. Um, how do you feel like things are in the neighborhood now? With, uh, with I, I think it's, 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 it's such a, 
Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, such a hopeful time, mm-hmm. and we recently did a, a series of plays. This was Kirby's her idea. I think it was fantastic. We looked for plays that during the pandemic had been shut down, uh, that were due to have a reading or production or a workshop, and we sent out a call for these plays, and uh, and we called the series re- the renewal series, and we had a reading of eight plays over the course of the year of these plays that didn't give the chance to uh, see the light of day. And uh, and so there was just a feeling of, you know, of of renewal and hope. Mm-hmm. And I, I th- I've been seeing that going to the, the film festival uh, a, a couple months ago. Um, I really felt it there as well. And uh, yeah, that's that's been great. My only my only if I, if I have to look for a, a dark side to the cloud, it would be uh, well, don't look for it. But if you <laughs> see it, let us know. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not, not seeing it. It's hearing it. The yeah, neighborhood yeah, seems yeah. to be much yeah. louder than it used to be. I mean, it was always loud. We always had our loud music. Sure. But but it. Uh, the uh, the motor vehicles that yeah. just seem to be you know outrageously loud. I mean, what, nobody seems to know what to do about it. It's, uh, it's well, an issue. Yeah, I I share that as a local resident too, and um, I can only hope that we're recording this at the end of September here, and so it's kind of you know falls upon us. So maybe that'll dissipate. But you would think with going back to school, perhaps things would slow down yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I'm with you. It hasn't really gone away so much yeah. and makes you slightly worried <laughs> about <laughs> about what's going on and, and also what's to come too because uh for those who are uh maybe forgotten or didn't know like we've gone through uh, a city rezoning here that is probably over the next 10 years five to 10 years i don't know depending how what happens in the world and how fast people get their um finances together Probably about another forty to fifty thousand people are going to be added to this neighborhood, which I could only imagine will mean more cars as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an anti-car person, um, you know. But uh, I sold mine in two thousand five, and best decision I ever made. Uh, and I'm a big believer in public transportation. But hey, I like getting away upstate, wherever else too. So I'm mm-hmm. a big believer in having a car, but uh, and getting around. But um, it, it, the the capacity is the issue though, because there are just simply not enough parking spaces, and uh, we have you know a lot of our buildings were built you know sixty, seventy, eighty years ago, yeah. and they didn't have parking. Our the architects then weren't thinking <laughs> right <laughs> ahead to then. So and, and we have only two little bridges, you know, that little bridges you know, that are, take us that out of the two, neighborhood. Kind of two lanes each. Yeah. Yeah. And, and 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 Manhattan gets really squeezed up here if you look at the map. Yeah, you know, so we're gonna have a lot more people in a lot narrower space, and so uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how we handle that. Yeah. yeah. Do you think it's still gonna be an artist haven up here, the way the prices are going up to? Hmm. <sighs> I think to these artists that have been successful enough to stay up here and afford to stay up here, it will remain that way. Um, like I have friends that still live in Williamsburg and places like that in yeah, Soho. Sure. Um, maybe they held on to departments because they could they got them so cheaply back in the day. Right. Well, artists are savvy people, so they find a way. Yeah, usually. yeah, yeah. But who knows? You know, uh, uh, my daughter is uh, 21, and you know her cool friends have moved out to Bushwick, and they're like, wow, Bushwick, wow, that's so far, and why would you want to? Li- live in Bushwick but you know these they always find those places and uh, I guess who knows where it'll I think the Bronx is going to explode after after this neighborhood yeah yeah I think so too yeah I I think so too and like Mott Haven places like that yeah definitely yeah Yeah, you're just a couple stops from Manhattan from up there yep yep and uh Hey, you know what? It's it'll be interesting when Inwood becomes downtown to some people. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, James, I want to thank you again. It's been a pleasure speaking with oh, you. Oh, it's just great. Uh, you know, and before we say goodbye, where can we send people to find more about your current and forthcoming projects? Well, um, you can email info at uptheater dot org, and we spell theater T H E A T E R in the uh, American way, the unpretentious way, the unpretentious way. It's info at theater dot org or you can go to our website, which is uptheater.org. There you go, folks. So you have your marching orders. <laughs> uh, so thank you again, James. Uh, listeners, we'll put some of those links in our description of this episode for you to find, okay? Uh, so thanks again, James Bosley, for, for joining me on this Artist Spotlight episode of In What Artworks On. Can I, can I just say one more thing? Well, okay, if oh, you really on. have to. No, no, no. I do have can. to. Of course you can. I do have to. I mean, I, 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 who's going to interview you one day? <laughs> I mean, you're you're the person that really you're, you're like the maestro up here now, and and people would like to know what your story is. So I would like to know. 
I, maybe I would like to maybe even volunteer that when you sure. have the Aaron Sims version of this, we're going to, or maybe you do it yourself, you know, you ask yourself, like, then you run over to this <laughs> <Yes>. chair. <laughs> exactly. And just have like, the, you know, hmm, yes, right. I'll stroke do, your chin. I don't do the Victor Victoria question, thing or something. Aaron, let me like, think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I think my story is, is your all story is like, my story is with, the, with you all. It's like by, it's being recorded. And, um, and I think the neat thing is that, um, having done, this is our, th- we're ending our third season and we're probably going to go to our fourth next year, God willing. Um, and, uh, you know, the fun thing about this is that you, you see yourself grow as long with, um, the people you've interviewed and, uh, and it's, it, to me, it's educational. I learn from people and, um, and also you, you, you bring people together in different ways. Like, uh, for instance, like this podcast has about 10,000 listeners, which is a great that's thing. Great. And that's great for the real reason. I think it's great is that it's people finding about you and finding out about how crazy talented, um, that you create your company on the, the, the part of the foundation you guys create your company on is that there's such a bastion of wonderfully talented people who live in northern Manhattan and the Northwest Bronx included. Um, and I like the fact that 60% of our listenership is, is, is New York City praised pretty much and outskirts in New York State. But 30 percent is national and ten percent is international. So you have people interested in, in, in taking notice of the work that you're doing and the work that everyone at Up's doing and the other people who are um, we've interviewed and their particular talents and drawing attention to that and being through the, just just the, pad, the podcast itself. It's kind of so it's it's promotional, but it's also interesting that it's become historical and it's become like a, a document of the times. Yeah. Uh, and so you, you can kind of dial into an episode we did in, you know, 2020 when we're recording it. Like we, we can't record in a restaurant now. Yeah. <laughs> like when we could record in a restaurant yeah. that was op- that was closed in 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and it's it's kind of interesting. Like, and I like the fact that when recording, literally, um, we pop up these recording sessions like Good, Good Shepherd here today. Uh, you know, the neighborhood is a character in the show too. Yeah, yeah. So you can is, kind yeah. of see the character yeah. and like, oh, this is what the convent kind of looked like yeah. at uh, yeah. at some point. You know, white shot. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, it's 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 great. And I, I thank you for your your your, your comments. And uh, um, we'll see. I don't I don't know. Uh, we kind of we kind of did a uh, hundredth episode review or. I don't like to talk too much, but I had to in that one, and we kind of like hit kind of the greatest hits of some of uh, mm-hmm. you know, critics' picks, if you will, not greatest hits of what we've done in the podcast. But uh, but yeah, I said I know my story is just keep doing it, mm-hmm. you know, and we can and as well to our path. But like this too shall pass, you know what I mean? Like this, there's oh, an yeah. end, there's an end for everything. And, and I like what you said earlier. I, I thought about it. I meant to respond. Is that you know I was speaking to Gregory Mosier at one point. He used to run Lincoln Center. I've met Gregory yeah. and. Um, He's now running the program over at. Oh, I'm going to screw it up. It's East Side. It's not. Um, is it Baruch? Uh, I could screw this up. Um, but I think um, it is Baruch. I think it is Baruch. He's running the program, the Masters program, Baruch. Now he was at Columbia when I was there, and you know we talked about you know this, this towards new theater and you know what what theater companies should be doing and things like that. And one of the things we kind of all collectively agreed on is that you know artistic directorships like should have like a term limit. Um, for like, and we make like, we end up like eight years or something like that because, you know, you see certain people who are there for like 40 years at the same time as that 40 years in New York is different than 40 years in like Indianapolis, um, where there's a much smaller pool and perhaps much smaller, um, opportunities, uh, for leadership. Um, but you know, I think you have to cultivate that as well. So I think there's, you know, Give people their turns is not the worst thing in the world, mm-hmm. and I yeah. and I and I appreciate your answer before all yeah. that and all that. But um, well, thank you again. I appreciate your comments, and uh, you know, you know, let's just keep you know trying to keep doing theater uptown. Yeah, you know. Well, I, I think the more we do up here, the more uh, people downtown start hearing about us. I know our own company. Yeah. Um, you know, we've, we did it just for the neighborhood. We thought, well, all the people from the right. neighborhood. Come. But after a while, you know, the word gets out, and our our little uh, model of is starting to spread out across 
the tri-state area. Well, I believe the theater, I, I mean, you, as you know, aside from Inwood Artworks, I'm also producing theater downtown and or around. And it's like, I, the reason why I created Inwood Artworks is I believe the future is local. I think like, and, and we saw that as very much in the pandemic, like people more than ever paying attention to their yeah. surroundings, maybe maybe a little too close. So we saw a lot of divorces <laughs> happening during the pandemic. Hey, some, you know, some weddings too and some unions and, and, uh, and, and, and companies falling apart and, and, um, yeah. but also, but kindling new, uh, but, but, but the, the, but it forced people to look to their neighbors. Yeah. And I think that was, if you want to say one of the positives yeah. out of the pandemic that we've had, um, but you and I both like we started our companies way earlier than that, and I, I, I do believe like you know there's something to be said about going to the grocery store and seeing the guy who just performed on stage yeah. last night you yeah. saw in the play, yeah. Yeah. or you're riding in the subway down with the playwright, yeah. um, or the person you saw on the film festival or whatever on the podcast. Uh, and it makes New York and it makes your community just a little less weird. Yeah, and brings yeah, a yeah more, that's it. And brings a little more warmth and yeah. uh, togetherness yeah. to uh, yeah. to you know your lives. And I yeah. think at the end of the day, it's using art as a platform to bring people together. Yeah, community. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you again, James. Right, thank you for having me. You betcha. Uh, this is In What Artworks On Air. It's where we meet the musicians, filmmakers, writers, theater makers, and artists of all stripes that make their home here in Upper Manhattan. If you have a moment, please show us some love right now by rating and reviewing this podcast on Apple Podcasts. It really does help us. Many thanks to Church of the Good Shepherd here uh, and Inwood NYC for hosting us and to HideSites.com for uptown promotional support. You can support On Air and all of our programming by making a tax-free donation at InwoodArtworks.nyc backslash donate or donate via Venmo. Uh, be sure to follow us on social media at Inwood Artworks to keep up with all that we do, which includes the Inwood Film Festival, Filmworks Al Fresco, pop up art galleries, live performances, and so much more. Inwood Artworks On Air is proud to be supported in part by public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with City Council. From the top of Manhattan and the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Aaron Sims for Inwood Artworks On Air. Mm-hmm.